Hello, everybody. Hi, do feel free to unmute for a moment just before we start and just say hello. Hi, welcome, welcome. Hi. Hello. Happy Saturday. Another moment. Oh, that was to the backs. Yeah, okay. So, um, welcome everyone to this writing, writing as prayer for uncertain times, which um, I, my name is Heidi Hinder Chadwick, and I run the Creative Genius based in Manchester, which is working with the creative process through coaching and workshops. Um, usually in, you know, the old normal times, BC, <laughs> we would come together and we would do a lot of kind of movement work as well, kind of really getting embodied and then create. Um, and I've been doing this for um, over 15 years now, um, workshops and retreats working with the body and the arts. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a dancer, performance artist, um, and I'm absolutely passionate, passionate, passionate about creativity as just the most incredible force and potential for healing, for change, for revolution, um, for health, for joy, because that's a massive part of, of creating. So I'm really excited to be doing this and to meet you all as well today. So thank you for joining I'm just letting people in They're still arriving here so I know nothing about any of you obviously I'm just meeting for the first time um so just have a we'll just take kind of just a couple of minutes you don't have to by the way yeah so workshops for me are very interactive I think it's wondrous to be able to hear each other and um, share parts of our process anything that comes up for us um, if you want to, there is no like we're going round in a circle and everyone has to share something. So if you just don't feel like it or it's just not your thing, you don't have to share anything. Um, but it's really welcomed. So just making that very clear. You can sit back and enjoy the workshop or if you'd like to participate a little bit more, then your voice is so welcomed here. And I usually find that we always, we just inspire each other, don't we? with what we have to share and the things that we find. And we forget that sometimes. So I think that's um, a good thing to, to note. So what we're gonna do today is a very simple practice. And it's a practice that I've been using for about a decade now, actually. Um, sometimes I use this writing practice nearly every day. It helps me with clarity. Sometimes I use it specifically if I'm working on a project or working on collaboration um, and just need some more clarity around that. So it's quite versatile. So my intention is that not only will you get to try this and see how it works for you, but you might also leave with a writing practice that could be you know, helpful and supportive for you um, if it resonates. And if not, then you've had half an hour doing something creative on a Saturday morning in January. <laughs> so are you all an artist? artists and writers what anyone like to kind of say hello and share who you are and maybe why you've come to this hello my name's my name's amanda i'm a textile designer um but i've been trying to do a lot more mindful things through lockdown and um I'm really fascinated with the use of words in art as well. And I use art therapy. So I thought I'd join you and just expand my repertoire a bit and see if it can help. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Amanda. Lovely to see you. Nice ceiling, by the way, I like beans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm Steph, Steph Shipley. Um, I'm based in Bolton. I work in the art. Um, teaching part-time. I work in fine art really, um, which is where my practice lies, particularly interested in place. I use a lot of text and, and writing within my work. Recently, mm -hmm. oh, certainly over lockdown, I've been writing morning pages, mm -hmm. um, sort of just 
I don't know, it's just become a habit, I suppose. Um, not as diary, but just as just as a, a stream of consciousness or unconsciousness. <laughs> I don't know, just as it comes, really. So that's why I was writing. And I've been in contact with, I, I am part of a church community, so I have been in contact with pastoral friends um, using telephone because we can't meet and so on. So uh, all, all sorts of elements there, really, that might connect. Mm, beautiful and absolutely it's kind of for me it's a bit like an alternative morning pages but it's a lot more focused and there's a lot of layers to this but very similar in that way you know practice the clarity um very much so so lovely lovely to meet you steph thank you anyone else you don't have to you can if you want to i'll say hi <laughs> Um, I'm a, an artist and facilitator uh, based in New York. Um, I teach part time also art and design uh, with young teenagers teaching remotely at the moment. Uh, yeah, I've always um, written in one form or another, but never had a real structure. It's something I've always done from an early age off my own back and subconsciously. So I guess it's called stream of consciousness writing, isn't it? And it always seems to have been a bit of a prop in, in harder, darker times. Um, uh, I paint though, really, and that's got a similar uh, process, really. It's really subconscious. It just seems instinctive and intuitive. Um, and that's, that's what I'm really interested in, really, and applying that coming here to apply maybe for mindfulness really in that sense uh, and for the current situation <laughs> so, yeah yeah thank you <laughs> thank you Charlotte lovely to meet you yeah I think there's something about um what we and it's I don't know I think coming into this new lockdown for me beginning of this year there's a kind of sense of like right we all know where we're starting from kind of bottom line isn't it here we go again but also a deeper sense, I know, for myself of what are the resources that are available to me? And one of the main resources has always been, since my earliest memories, is creating. Um, and, you know, as a couple of you have mentioned about mindfulness, it is something, isn't it? Probably you all experience this when you're in that flow of creating. You are literally in the moment. You're present. Mm -hmm. So for that respect, I think it's kind of very powerful practices and very old practices. People have been creating and writing and dancing since the very beginning of time, and it's a universal language. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I think in these times, it really is like, what can we turn towards that um, can support us and build resilience as well? I think that's very powerful. Lovely. Thank you. Great. Um, let's have a look. I don't I'm that used to love doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Bex, for that. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so hello to Dee. That's all I can see is Dee right there. So hi, lovely, welcome. And Siobhan as well, um, lovely to meet you there. And I, and I think this is also going to be put on the air page and YouTube as well. So for anybody else that's that's watching, um, just to say before we begin, this is going to be an actual practical participatory session. So if you haven't done so already, grab yourself a pen and paper or papers or notebook um, and do join in. You get more out of it if you actually um, take part in the session as well. So we're going to write for, let me just check where we are with our time. Okay. We're going to write for um, a very short period of time. So we're probably going to do this literally for about, I think, five minutes each part. And there's four questions that we're going to write. I'm going to obviously hold the time space. Um, yeah, that's all you have to do. And you don't have to, no one has to know what you're writing. You don't have to share anything. And as you're writing these answers to these questions for me questions are everything I find them very powerful not to give it to the mind to search for an answer but to almost like to drop into you the sense of this inquiry and to see what wants to arise so I really invite you to be aware of your body's response to the questions to allow yourself to go off on tangents you don't have to keep coming back I've got to answer the question if something arises for you and it's interesting, follow it. 
often a lot of pieces I end up writing have come from doing this practice in the morning, perhaps a line that comes through or a memory or an image. And I've gone on and taken that because it's felt quite interesting to me. Really pay attention to anything that makes you feel alive, like it sense it has that your energy is um, resonating. Because those of you that do morning pages, or if you're aware of that kind of writing subconsciously, we can write a load of crap, can't we? <laughs> it just comes out and it's it's a clearing out, you know, it's an unplugging. But then occasionally there might be something that just really touches us. It's like, wow, okay. And that I call is when we touch truth, we touch our actual wisdom that is buried underneath um, all of the craziness and the busyness and the to-dos and, and all of this thing as well. So really pay attention and follow anything that comes up that feels alive for you. You can't get this wrong. That's really important to know. You can't get this wrong. So, uh, and, uh, and yeah, last thing as well. Notice if the sensor comes in. Yeah, you can just notice. If it does, you can just write, oh, oh, that's interesting. I'm censoring what I'm writing here, you know, and maybe move on or follow that thread. So catch as much as you can. Does that all sound, that makes sense, everyone? Okay, and I'm gonna join you doing this as well, because I, um, I always like to join in. I'm going to, I'm going to put, set the timer. So, okay. So the first question, oh yeah, just in the one other thing as well. If you get stuck, just keep either writing the question or writing, I don't know, or blah, blah, blah. Keep going basically, okay. So the first question is, what do I need? What do I need?
So just bringing your sentence to its own natural pause. We're going to move on to the, the second question, which is, what do I want? What do I want?
So just bringing that sentence to its pause. Third question. What do I desire? What do I desire?
again, bringing that to close. And we're going to move to our last question now, which is, what can I offer or give? What can I offer or give?
Just bringing that to a close. It's interesting, practice um, not just for yourself, but as I mentioned right at the beginning, I can use it sometimes on, you know, a, a book that I might be writing or a story or a painting. You can ask those questions to it. What do you need? You know, what do you desire? What, what, are, you, what are you giving? Um, so you have a dialogue with your art, which is a part of you. It's alive, as you know, you know, it's evolving, it's creating, it breathes, it talks to you, it annoys you, <laughs> you know, all this stuff that any other kind of living relationship kind of has to offer as well. It's very, um, can be used in quite a different way. So I'd love to just take, um, we've got a little bit of time left. Um, I'd really love if anyone wants to share like how that was or anything that, that came up for them, um, whether that worked for you, whether it didn't work for you, um, that it would be wonderful to, to hear you. Remember, you can't get this wrong, if that helps. I think um, having the questions gave more focus in a way. It gave freedom to, to you know, respond to, to the prompts, but it gave more focus than just a general pouring out of how you happen to be feeling at a particular time. Mm. So I think it gave an honesty uh, that perhaps that truth that you were talking about earlier um the truth of, of real real maybe real desires and needs that sometimes we don't even want to admit to ourselves um and it there was a difference between need and want and desire and then what we have we can offer so there's a there was that two wayness between things that you know help our help might make a difference to us and what we can in turn share so a, a generosity reciprocity perhaps so mm. those were just some thoughts but yeah it was it was a lovely exercise mm. and it flowed very very it seemed to flow very easily. Beautiful. Yeah, completely. It's it's for me. It's like a breath. This is where the prayer aspect comes into it. It's the those layers are really interesting, aren't they? Because they 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 have different flavors, and you're going deeper. You know, needs. Let's say there's there's a lot of things that I've kind of noticed about this practice over the years. But you know, the needs is almost like your survival essential level. You know, and then it gets deeper um, and deeper, and then once we've gone really in. We have to then breathe out it's like the breath in we have to then breathe out so it becomes like you say this generosity in this sense of this place of giving and receiving our place in life um you know there has to be that that continual kind of cycle so, so lovely thank you and, and um yeah there's a quote as well when you said about it gives um you know that structure is helpful and um, there's a dance five rhythms dance teacher called gabrielle roth who she died actually about I think seven or eight years ago and I love her quote I actually have it written on a blackboard in, in my home which is it takes discipline to be a free spirit it takes discipline to be a free spirit and it's so true isn't it that's having some kind of structure is so vital otherwise our creative energy which is pure flow it, it just can get wasted it can go anywhere it hasn't got a a frame like a painting you know if you think about it in that way the frame is the container and then you can, it's almost like, like you say, it gives more freedom. It's a paradox, but then life is for the paradox, isn't it? So, yeah, thank you. Anyone else like to share? I liked the um, prompts that you gave us about listening to the inner critic. I have um, a very loud inner voice that tells me that I'm not, I can't do things like that. I can't think things like that and it was a real battle in the words to notice that what do I want and actually ask that as an honest question without the censorship 
and um, so a lot of my my writing was repeating the same thing over and over again because it was like almost like telling the inner critic or the censor no you, you can't stop keep stopping me you can't I'm my own worst enemy and it was really interesting mm, thank you for sharing that um it's interesting because I didn't actually mention about the inner critic but I love how that's the thing that you thought I did mention did it's you? Kind of, it's ah. kind of, no because it's so true we all have oh my goodness you know that's why I mentioned about censorship and we are our own worst enemy um, and there were ways to play with that you know, kind of making characters in these places and giving them a dialogue or painting them. I, I do collage with some of them. And you, it's amazing what you find. Like I work with um, resentment, you know, you know, we, have, we hold all these places. We hold judgment, we, we hold jealousies, we hold resentments, we hold all of these places that we don't like and we try to hide, but they're part of the human experience. And I think the more that we're able to go, yeah, I have this, it runs through me. It's liberating to ourselves and to everyone else who also has these. You know, I, I, I um, yeah, I did a whole collage around, which was called Rosie Resentment. And she was fabulous. She was actually kind of this quiet, this <laughs> quiet, like this mistress who, you know, had a lot of energy to give. A lot of my, a lot of our creative energy is held in these places. And until we go in and, and allow ourselves to play with them a little, not to kind of like, I've got to fix this or repair this or get rid of this part of me. They actually all contain kind of gifts that we can use. You know, I always think of like the Greek or the Roman gods. They were all mental, weren't they? I mean, they were going around revenge, affairs, killing their children, having, you know, or, you, know you think about it. They, they really, they were gods, you know, in these stories. But there is a real sense that they're human and they allowed all these full expressions. Some of it creates creativity. Some of it creates destruction, you know. Um, but thank you for sharing that, though, and being so honest about um, that place. It's... Um, keep having that battle with that you know mm -hmm. but put on you know make it wwf so put us a funny outfit and <laughs> <laughs> get in the ring with your inner critic and see what maybe i'll find uh, my own rosie and and have a look at her yeah all of these they can be fun but i mean it's there is ways to do it because if it's still quite raw we're quite triggered we need to be very careful that it does get to a place where we're able to be with these places and then we can play with them when they trigger us as we all know when we're triggered by things the first thing that goes is playing creativity we can't in that place we're in a survival mode we're in our reactive mode creativity and play come from a place of responding to life not reacting and we all know the difference don't we from mm. these places so but yeah great thank, thank you. you um i'm aware that bex has written something but i just want to see if anyone else here would like to share Let's see what backs. Where do I post the backs? Mm, need for balance, backs. Yeah. They're preventing it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's throwing this awareness. Essentially, you know, going back to the mindfulness, it's throwing this awareness back to how we are. And I can't, you know, say this enough, but it's not about how do I fix this or waiting to get rid of this part of me. It's how do I bring this part in? How can it work for me? Maybe it flavors my writings. Maybe it flavors my art in some way because and it doesn't deny all of who you are. Um, it's almost like you kind of, you know, bring it on board as part of your employee <laughs> in their employee section rather than it kind of running around actually being the boss and you're not you know kind of aware of it um I think too many of us creative people or any you know all of us are creatives um don't do our work I I'm totally guilty of this you know and it's an ongoing thing we don't do our work because of all of these you know places that we judge or I've got to work it out or that person's not got that going on or that I don't know about you, but some of the people I most admire, they're so flawed and so imperfect. And, and that's part of actually why I admire them and what they put out is their capacity to be fully human. So, so yeah, anyway, I can, as you can tell, I can go on and on about all of this stuff <laughs> for ages, but I am aware of um, our time. So um, just... If anyone else has anything they want to share before we close.
I was just going to say, I think, I think we don't realise until we start to, to share and, and you know, communicate with each other how, how many things we have got in common. And you can sit in your quiet room in lockdown and, and, and some of these things sort of grow into much bigger uh, monsters than, than they need to be. And, you know, we are all experiencing, that doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, every experience is unique and different, but mm. in the, being, you know, aware that we're all in it together and in different ways. But it's been really, really lovely this morning. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and that's where compassion arises when we're able to kind of see that, the humanness of each other as well, as well as the divinity, which is where I see creativity comes in. It's, you know, to me, the divine comes through what we create. Yeah. Okay, my darlings, thank you so much um, for, your, for your, I hope that was helpful and useful. And um, if you're interested to, to, to work with me more or to do any other thing, then um, um, Check out the creative genius. I'm Heidi Hinder Chadwick, and um, you know, it'd be nice to see you with something else. I'm running a lot of these. You know, it's been yeah, doing stuff online is a whole new ball game, but I'm actually kind of enjoying it, and it seems to work. So, so yeah. But take care of yourselves, and um, much love. And thank you, and thank you, Bex, as well for sorting this out. Bye, thank lovely. You. Thank you. Bye.